Hello, welcome to Joy News Exclusive. My name is Stephen Enti. The Ochehini Osaje for Amwetia Ofori Penyin has launched a sanitation improvement initiative codenamed Operation Cleaner and Healthier Communities. The initiative, according to the King, is aimed at mobilizing the business community and civil society to share sanitation improvement responsibilities in the country with the view to complementing government effort in the area of community sanitation. Coming from an influential statesman of a stature, the journey's exclusive team sought to find out from the king himself what this initiative is all about. We had an exclusive interview with him at the Ofori Pinyin Fier here in Accra. But before then, let's take a look at excerpts from the launch of the initiative. First, uh, we will hear from uh, part of the Ochehini's presentation at the program today. We'll take a break and when we return, we'll bring you that. Stay with us. Welcome back to Joy News Exclusive. Let's now hear uh, the Ochehini Osaji for. for I'm waiting for your opinion, I beg your pardon, at the launch of his initiative earlier today. It's time for us to see other things that will change our behavior. The reason we've lost it is everybody thinks that, well, it's a government's problem. But when you allow people to own their communities, the psychology of ownership is different. We've been at this centrality for so long and it's not working. If we don't begin to decentralize this country and place responsibilities in the hands of local folks, let them take charge of their own destiny. Let Adabaka run its own sanitation problem. Let Osu do the same. Let the people of Chebi handle their own sanitation. Everywhere you've been, when systems are small and local and widely scattered, they are relatively immune to failure. We have a system when we have brought everything to Accra. Everything. So when Ghana wakes up, everybody is coming to Accra. 75% of our people live in rural Ghana. And they have no opportunities, so what they do every day, they'll have to come to Accra. They come here and they have no homes. So they'll sleep on the streets. I am tired of hearing that, oh, well, there's another one. Oh, well, this is Africa. It won't work. We must make it work. We must make it work. Because you know what? The difference between us us humans and all other species and the beasts in the forest is a function of our mind, our humans' ability to think and to think creatively. We came from homes where our parents taught us how to clean. Remember our mothers got up at 4 o'clock in the morning to clean the house wash dishes before they sleep, wake us up. And the first thing they say, go to the bathroom and wash your body. Clean your teeth, comb your hair, tack in your shirt, iron your clothes. So we can't say anymore. When we have a lagoon here that God blessed us with in the heart of our city, that should be a national asset where all folks can go and take a walk of leisure, when boats can provide restaurants at night, when we have parks where we can discuss issues. Over the years, we have turned that lagoon into a garbage can. And every year, you hear there's some money given for dredging, 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 and it never gets done. So this is a start. Let us just not only clean our homes, but own our community. You know, when, when, when I hear Prof and Joe come to me and say, well, 
they've talked to Herbert and he's willing to come on board. They've spoken to Mr. Boateng, he's willing to come on board. The people are here, many people are willing to come on board. Good men and women who think the same way we're thinking. We're hoping in certain cases we would need the help of government to enforce some of these laws. If we do respect ourselves as Ghanaians, as humans, we will not do some of the things that we do. So the campaign is not only cleaning up. The campaign is we are asking you to respect one another. We're asking that we respect our space. These things may not show up on your resume, but all over the world, the history of mankind has been this. You make a contribution in your world that will prepare your town, your city for future generations. What I see in this country is we're not thinking about our children's future. Well, uh, that's Ochehine himself. Let's now hear the Minister of Chieftaincy and Culture who also spoke at the function. In order for all our cities, particularly our national capital, which we consider as the gateway to West Africa, as well as a millennium city, to be clean, we must galvanize all our efforts in maintaining good sanitation practices. And Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, Wherever human beings gather, their waste also accumulates. Progress in sanitation and improved hygiene are known to have greatly improved health. But many still think it is somebody else's business to dispose of their waste. There is therefore a growing nuisance for heavily populated areas carrying the risk of infectious diseases particularly to the vulnerable groups such as the very young, the elderly, and people suffering from diseases that lower their resistance. I know the keynote address will be given by the Honorable Minister, but then let me take some few words from him. An urban sanitation policy developed by the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development was launched not quite long ago by His Excellency the President, John Dramani Mahama. And it is aimed at improving sanitation in urban areas, identifying rules and responsibilities of stakeholders, legislation, and funding, among others. The policy took note of the following. Rapid urbanization of other towns not initially considered as urban. Lack of access in built-up areas as a result of improper physical planning. The Chieftain's institution is gradually exhibiting its dynamism through new leadership, as is going to happen today. And this lunch obviously attests to the role of chiefs in the developmental agenda of the country. In all this, chiefs being the custodians of our land have a role to play. As stakeholders, but it cannot be done alone by the chief in spite of the initiative today. And therefore, we take cognizance of the fact that let's all rise up and bow and clean up the system. So the total support of all, including the assemblies in particular, is needed in this direction. It is important to recall that some time ago, Accra was managed by only Accra Metropolitan Assembly. But now, if we stretch, we have Adenta, Gan West, Gan East, Lejekuku, Ladadiko, Tumpong, Medina, and all that, and to extent, Ewutu Senya, which is Kaswa, all urban areas. Now, if one considers these urban areas alongside the rapid expansions in areas like Abokobi, Pram Pram, Pong, Afenya, Dodowa, Oyibi, Akosombo, and the rest, then it stands to reason that an initiative like this is relevant and necessary so that we are not caught up in total urbanization without preparation. The difficulties encountered by the various municipal, metro, and these assemblies in their house-to-house -house refuse collection gives a clear indication of the need for this laudable, laudable project to be extended as a collaborative effort. Now, Chairman, 
I need not overemphasize the role of traditional leaders with regard to better hygiene and sanitation among our people. They play a lead role in enforcing existing legislation and support all promotional activities as role models and ambassadors for sanitation in their respective areas. I wish to add my voice in commending Osajifo Amotio for repaining for this initiative and call on all well-meaning chiefs to emulate this loud, laudable example by taking on other areas needing similar attention, such as the case of Kaya Yo tra trafficking and the rest. In conclusion, I wish to state that fundraising is more than a job. In the right hands, it is a powerful force for change. And while that change is underway, it should be an inspirational beacon of hope for all. So let us all get involved. As the team connotes, let's team up to clean up. Be the deputy minister of chieftaincy and culture, John Alexander Akon. So let now take you. Let's now take you to the uh, Ofori Penny Fee here in Accra, where uh, I was privileged to have an exclusive interview with the Ochehini Osaji for Amwiti Ofori Penny. Today, the Ochehine Osajifo Amwete of Repenin launched a sanitation improvement initiative code named Operation Cleaner and Healthier Communities. The objective of this is to encourage corporate entities and individuals and the citizenry in general to inculcate a habit of cleaner environment. The king of Ochimang is an overlord of a large, vast uh, area of wealth in Ochiman where he has the power to influence environmental commitments from governments and individuals as well. So today on Joe News Exclusive, we are at Ofuru Pinyufi here in Accra to have an exclusive chat with the king of Ochiman himself so that he walks us through the motivation, what led him uh, to start such an initiative. Nana, it's great to have you on Journeys Exclusive. Hi, thank you. Your initiative is grand. I mean, seeing that you are king over a wide concession of minerals, really, in Ochima, one would think um, a king of your stature would not be interested in cleaner environment. Tell us what your motivation for this sanitation project is. Well, I, um, you know, I, I grew up in, in the States and I understood how communities survive that when you have people working together for common cause, you always win. I thought about this a long time ago, and if you understand, I, I started speaking about environment and HIV AIDS when I came home. And I want to take it further. Uh, every time you come to our city, uh, you see filth all over the place. You drive and you see people throwing things out of the car. So I had an intense discussion with my good friend, Dr. Akosa. Uh, and I said, we have to do something about this. And we have to do it on our own. We have to start this, not going to government. For anybody to, 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 to start this, we have to start this again. I said, well, no, Sajifu, once you've charged me to do this, we're going to put it together. And we're doing this not for any monetary reward. We're doing it because it is deep in our crevices of our heart to make sure that this will make a contribution to our community. We want our children to feel proud, not only about themselves, but about the community in which they live in. And that's why we're doing this. Right, so let's, let's talk about the, the individual components of the plan. I mean, this is an initiative which uh, part of it is dubbed, let's team up and clean up. So what should we expect after the launch of uh, this initiative? We want all hands on deck, and even those who will be part of it still need help. 
we need to engage everybody, corporate Ghana, politicians, ministers, academicians, to come on board. Because this will benefit all. We want to use everybody's strength to benefit the community. And so we are asking Ghana to support this initiative. What would you say as a country we're falling back when it comes to sanitation? Where did the problem begin? Um, let me take it back to the whole continent. We have a problem in our country. I don't think we have shown great love and great passion for our countries across the world. If you think about how our cities have been managed and how every country has almost equal problems, it means we're not taking care of our business. We grew up, our mothers tell us that we need to clean up, you need to wash your body, you need to brush your teeth. We see our mothers at 4.30 in the morning cleaning homes, packaging garbage, making sure that they don't throw it recklessly. And all of a sudden, we have let that intrinsic value into some values that is unconnected. So we need to make sure that we form the habit that will make sure that our environment you can't have your home clean and the street just next door to your house dirty. We need everyone to come home so we can do this. When we, we, we take a walk on the streets of Accra, uh, virtually everywhere is filthy, really. I mean, this week we, we visited a couple of beaches in, in, in Accra, particularly Botiano and Kokrobiti, where we were shocked at the, the level of filth around the beaches where we buy fish and we eat. But when I interact with the assembly men and those in authority, the impression I get is that no matter the efforts that the local authorities put in place, the individuals sometimes bypass the bins. And later, is it something that can change? It has to change. Our attitude has to change in this country. We need to defend and respect the rule of further even respect the rule of nature, God's law. All these things that we see around us was given to us by the Almighty for our use. In the olden days, we understood very well that killing and hunting is part of nature's cause for food. When they did it, they did it with appreciation and thankfulness. We do it now as a matter of right, recklessly. So unless we as a nation believe in the rule of law, that when you break a law, you're going to be punished, and have law enforcement, the regulatory agencies doing their job, we will not, do, we will not win this war. I know your plan is that this would uh, complement government efforts, and that you're not directly seeking government help in, in terms of financing this initiative. But really, I mean, if we live in a country where there is a government, there should be some responsibility from those in leadership position and in authority. So what is it exactly that you would wish that uh, government put in in order to make sanitation improvement a reality for all? Well, government, you all understand how the rural urban migration is creating problems here in Accra. Which is, there's a limit to the size of the city how many people would can come to this world. We have approached that far beyond. So to leave it up to the government to do this alone, I think, is unfair. And so we want to do this and have the people make a commitment for their own health uh, initiatives. So yes, we compliment government. They can take the credit, but we're doing it as passionately as we can to help all people in this country. reference to the fact that growing up we all had tips of sanitation for our, from our parents who woke up at the crack of dawn to clean. Do you think that the sense of cleanliness is lost in the younger generation? 
the sense of community is lost. We grew up as an extended family unit. We've lost that. We have become too individualistic. Now, you tell me you have a $600,000 home in East Lake. The house is state of the heart, but they are real estate. When you leave the premises, the streets are unclean. What does that say? We are now selfish people. We don't care about the next door neighbor. We don't care about our own country. If we have that sense of community, as we're grown up, when it meant every child belonged to every adult, every community was everybody's business, we wouldn't have this. So first, we need to change the values and attitude, and sometimes bring back the past, which was good for all of us. How easy is it to do that? Difficult. I mean, you are a traditional ruler, so you may have a lot of rich insight on how to shape attitudes and you know encourage young ones to to lead the the the, the, the life that we wish them to. I mean, how easy is it to change? You know, you know, in the older culture. These old men and women, these old chiefs and kings, have not been to school to study sanitation. But in spite of their simplicity and primitiveness, they believed in the natural respect for our environment. That was one. They didn't have police and regulatory agencies, but when they said that in Chevy, no one chose sugar cane in the streets. That was it. When they instructed that no one should go farm 200 feet close to the riverbanks, that was it. We lived through that. That's why we came about to have good rivers as drinking water. And today, we, you can't even attempt can't to even wash it. Because we are given everybody a right to be a gum sale prayer. And we're not regulating them. And they're destroying the future of people who are innocent. Water, drinking water. We had a, 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 a thing in Achim that, Achim Kwa Minum Brain, the serenity of brain, the purity of brain, the respect that people are called that river. It's all gone. And we don't have the police to stop them. The word and the advice. It's not being heated. There's something wrong with the attitude in this country. We need to change. You, you, you just mentioned a very important thing, the uh, issue of illegal mining. I know you've been very outspoken uh, and to the point of even ordering that uh, chiefs who are found to be engaged in Galante, for example, must be arrested. Do you think, I mean, as, as, as a country, we're, we're getting the mix right or wrong when it comes to mining in general? I mean, we shouldn't. Illegal mining even becomes the, the, the latter part of it. But mining in general, do you think we've got a right mix? You want the stories here for you to know? I visited Johannesburg a few years ago. And I read a lot of literature by a guy called George Harrison who discovered Johannesburg and its gold deposits. And I look at Johannesburg today and what the gold has done for that city. We cannot say the same thing for Boise. Our Johannesburg becomes a competitive city in the world, or Boise remains a metropolitan village. The same gold deposits. There's something wrong with that arrangement. And we need to tackle that right now. We need to be able to tell our future generations when they come around and there are no gold, that we can tell them that we took your gold and we built you a fine city. We can't say that now. And I think it's shameful. It's shameful. What could have been done from the beginning to have corrected all this along the line? You know, we need to make sure that the people who live in this country have a chance to be wealthy. We talk about wealth creation for the IMF and foreign direct investors. Why are we giving the New Mountain, the Ashanti Gold, 95%, 90% of what we have? Because somebody's dictating to us that if you don't do that, we're going to be in trouble. When you're not strong, when you're not self-sufficient, you bargain away your wealth. And that's what we've done. Are we not strong as a country? We're not. Domestically, our economy is not. Are we not self-sufficient? We're not self-sufficient. Everything we have in this country that has any meaning 
is owned by somebody else. Six mobile companies in this country. There's not one indigenous Ghanaian owner or a consortium of Ghanaian business people who own one. Every time you and I say hello, somebody's making money. 25, 30 airplanes land and take off in our country every day. We have no market share. But we're looking good. Our economy is growing. Because the IMF says that we have a sovereign credit rating of D+. Plus. It is good for you to come to Ghana and make business, come here with a, full, a suitcase full of money and invest in Ghana and repatriate your profits. That is all good. But what about us? When they all depart, what is left? When they all leave, when MTN and Tego and everybody leaves, we have not created a millionaire in this country who is a Ghanaian. And there's young stalwarts who have innovative and creative ideas to own some assets, some property in this country. Is it perhaps the reason why any ambitious person goes abusing the environment to make wealth? Well, we haven't been given a chance. It, we have not been given a chance. And the reason has always been that we do not have capital. And if we don't produce capital internally, how do you access capital? And that's where the problem is. Secondly, every year, when you take your business and ask people to come and help you, you cannot fight them on one end and beg them on the other. See, that's where we are. Welcome back to the studios. Uh, this is Joy News Exclusive. Uh, you can post your comments on our Facebook wall and we'll read it for the whole world to see. I have a couple of comments which have come in and before we move to the second part of the interview, uh, let's hear some of your comments. Uh, Ronald, your boy, fine boy, you say that, ah, that is Ghana for you. Anyway, it's good. I thought we had no money in the system and that was a reason for tariff increment. Why then should they give us such a big amount to a single player when we are in tariff increment time? Well, I don't understand what you're saying and how that relates to the environmental sanitation. But, hey, that's your, uh, that's your view. Akusi Ajiman says, commendable. And Newton Jaffet says, that's a good idea. Christian Salvo says, well, this is a call in the right direction. The Ochehini has done very well. He should keep it up. I salute you, Dana. And Ansar Kounimo says, good job. And Mario Perez Tamale, you say, God really bless Ochehini for this wonderful initiative. If Kings and chiefs in Ghana will follow suit. Communities, towns and villages will benefit and it will improve their lives. Ronald, your boy again, says, I think the king's wishes is on the right course since the health and shelter of every human being is paramount. And Baba Musa from Tamale says, the steps taken by the Ochehine is very laudable and worthy of emulation. Africanos uh, Dakwa Tufo says, that is the right thing every king should do to... Um, well, not, but not to mingle in politics. I guess that's what you want to say. What about the Galam say? Well, I put those questions to him, and I will, I'm sure we'll get the, these responses in the second part of the interview. And Ronald, your boy again, says, How is my old man, Olili? Uh, well, this is not sports. Uh, Francis Ousu says, That's a good one there. Keep it up. And Benjamin Bonti says, Very good initiative. And I hope it will be supported to the brim in order for the aims and objectives to be achieved. And Caleb Asiwome uh, Zawo says, I think that's a nice project to improve health. And Stone Charles says, Ghanaian attitude to sanitation has to change. Uh, have to change, I beg your pardon. And Yamano Zevo, you are from Nkwanta Volta region. You say, the main solution to our sanitation problem is attitude now change. Ochehini mentioned that also. And the earlier we change our attitude towards our environment, the better for Mother Ghana. Thanks for your uh, comment, Emmanuel. And Kulo Isa Ibn Ali says, very good job by the chief. And uh, Abdul Hali Nasi is asking, is he a chief or a king? Just want to know. Well, I think that he is a paramount um, chief, which makes him a king uh, of the Ochi Ochimang area and his uh, sub-chiefs. Our chiefs, uh, whatever you put it, I think uh, that will make sense. And Kulo again says, These are the citizens that we need 
uh, we need. Okay, so we'll pause on your comments here and um, we'll take the second part of my exclusive interview with Ochehini for opinion. Uh, stay with us and let's listen. Is there hope? I mean, uh, as, a, as a very powerful, influential leader of your, of your kind, if you give us hope, we'll latch on to that hope. We, Do you we, feel there's hope? There's, there, there is a tiny ripple of hope left. And it has to come from you and I. We need to speak up. We need to take what belongs to us as Ghanaians and make sure that as the other guy makes money, there's something here for us. There's something called domestic economy. That's where the hope is. There's hope because there are young people who want to do well. And we'll keep on talking. We keep on making suggestions. We keep on trying to persuade policy so that we look inside and say that unless we make, when we talk about wealth, if the people who live in this country are not wealthy, Meaningless. It is meaningless. And let's let's talk about education. You are very, very influential in the support of this university which is dedicated to our Greek and environmental studies in, in Bonsu. Um, do you think that is where we should be heading towards that is creating institutions of learning that will teach specializations of this kind? It has to start from the basics. We have talked enough about our first Prime Minister, Dr. Kwame. A lot of us may disagree with his politics, but he made sure that everybody, regardless of our social and economic status, had a chance to quality education. That's when we have a lot of rich human resources in our country. Remember, no country has been able to do well just because of what the country has. It has always been what the country knows, knowledge. Otherwise, Africa would be the best country in the world. We are the richest and yet poor because we've not made the public investment in education. Paying teachers well. In the olden days when we were growing up, you could come from the remotest area in this country and come to Achimota School. Why? Because there was a good teacher in every hamlet, in every town. Today, teachers, everybody wants to stay in Accra. And we're not given enough incentive for them to go back to education. With that education, we go nowhere. No longer is the world looking for territories and expansion to be great. They harness knowledge. And where are we in that world? Agricultural expertise, I guess, is one of the things that um, is, is being taught at this university at uh, Bonsu. I mean, as a country, we, we have been very dependent on agriculture, but yet we've not been able to turn the fortunes of our country through agriculture. Can this university drive it any different? We want to. We want to. I'll tell you what Professor Akos and I are talking about. You know the Tiwa Forest has a box of deposit. I know every government who comes on wants to go and exploit that box. We have offered to turn the Tiwa Forest into a national park. And we want to use the TR Forest as a laboratory for that university. It has all kinds of exotic species, all kinds of nature's work in there. Why destroy it? For immediate, immediate gain in destroying the future of the people. So it comes to vision, it comes to what you want to do, it comes to thinking long term. And if we do that, we are not asking for answers overnight, but over time, the university will try and build a university that will teach people about all kinds of agricultural techniques, all kinds of environmental and non-renewable resources, so that we'll be able to feed ourselves and export most of our commodities on the world market. Now, are you proud of your legacy in education, 
in environmental protection as such a journey? You know, I, I don't want to sound arrogant in taking credit, but when the educated elite came on, they stripped us of everything as many traditional authorities. The only thing that they left us, they couldn't take, was the freedom to make suggestions and to try and persuade policy. That's what I can do. And that's what I'm doing. How far are you hoping to go with that? I am not going to allow the voice of justice to be silent in this country, especially when it's voice of reason and compassion. It may be a lonely voice. It may be a voice misunderstood. It may be a voice going up against the prevailing opinion, but we're going to speak it anyway. We're speaking it because I'm thinking not about my children, but I'm thinking about somebody else's children. The one who is suffering because of geography of death, because they were not born in a crowd, they have no chance in life. When we talk about poverty in this country, there are two types. There's poverty within opportunity right here in Accra, and there's poverty without option. It's in rural areas. They have no option, and we need to give them that option. And so when we speak, even if the stones were here, so what kind of transformation are you hoping to bring to the rural folk? I'm asking these questions uh, because of the roles you've played in encouraging education and how outspoken you've been to environmental protection. Accra is not Ghana. Accra is not Ghana. Accra is not Ghana. I have advocated if we really need... Now look, we live in a country where we've not been able to build a super highway between our number one city and number two city. How good is that? In 60 years, how are we encouraging commerce? How are we trying to turn harmless into towns? So we need to take some decisions that is bold. We need, I've said all along, if we're serious, we should move some of these ministries and spread them all across the nation. What is the Ministry of Forest and Lands doing in Accra? It should be in Etiwa, for example. Exactly. Or oh, what's that group on? The Ministry of Agriculture, what is it doing here? We have gotten to the information age. There are computers, and there are texts, there are faxes, there are internet. Take the ministries and spread them. Give each region one ministry. You see comments will come in. Towns will begin to change. People then will stay where they are and not come to a cry every day. Well, how big is that? We've said this for 10 years, and all I could do is say it until somebody hears. You sound very passionate. Are you going to bring on board the same passion to this sanitation improvement initiative? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what I are you live, hoping I, to, to achieve well, with that? I'm talking. You know, and I have a good team. I have a great team. I have a good team. If you know the story of Dr. Akusa, Dr. Akusa, and you know Joe and the people involved, we're going to drive this home. We're going to drive this home until we change something. They call it not going, as you see it. Anywhere in the world, it's an asset. If you go to any city in the world, you see a lagoon in the city, it's an asset. Where all folks go and have leisure. Where sometimes the restaurants on the on the boat. Here is a garbage can. It's an ISO. It's a garbage can. And every year, every government says there's some type of ecological restoration. Every year. Monies have been voted. God gave us this, and until we respect the rule of nature, it's God's property for our being. We ain't going nowhere. And human beings and leadership should make that decision. And I mean, human beings and leadership, I, I, I want to believe that as a traditional ruler king, you could, you could, you could lead such an initiative without necessarily uh, leaving it to fall on government. Where are the resources? I have to fix it. I have to fix it. We don't control our own resource. That's why I have said over and over again, unless we are beginning to decentralize this country, where well, local force will own their resource, where well, it will be competitive. Here in Accra, don't you think if Adabaka has its own sanitation and property tax, Kokomlini has its own, Osu has its own, there will be competition. AMA cannot handle this. But somebody has to sit there and centrally control that. That is outdated. If you don't believe me, ask the Soviet Union. Or even when the computers came around. Remember, we used to have a CPU, Central Processing Unit. 
engineers thought about that and said, now we're gonna break this centrality of power and now look at what computers have done. And it's a fact in the world, everybody decentralized, except here in Africa. What is your one greatest wish for this country? For every child to have a table to write on, a chair to sit on, and a good teacher to learn from. Simple, so simple, simple. Because that's the beginning of our development. And knowledge. And after the launch of your sanitation improvement initiative, and let's say, given the next two years of its operation, what are you hoping to turn the cities into? Well, like I said, beginning of that, the investment we'll make will have to pay dividends in creating markets, fixing our roads, opening up our country, creating jobs. Men and women who have been stripped of their dignity, unable to find where to take care of themselves and their families right in this country. And then we go about saying that we are a middle income country. A middle income country where 45% of households in Accra don't have toilet facilities. When we throw everything around, we spit urinate. When people are renting houses to, to young girls who have just left university and asking them to pay five years in advance. And we watch, and it's normal for everybody. How do you leave school and you get a new job and somebody tells you, Lalo, before you come and rent this, you have to pay four years in advance? Where's the protection from our government? It has to change. And maybe this platform and this interviews will, will probably hit somebody's heart and will change. I'm not blaming individuals. But it's gone on too far. We personalize institutions. We personalize everything in this country. But this is for all. When you get disappointed, as I've been several times, you know what? I go back to a friend of mine. I go back to he's my hero. The things he said in that song that you and I sang when we were little, we didn't understand. Is what is happening right now. All of this belongs to all of us. He said that your forefathers fought to secure this. What have you done to add on? And we have no answers. He said, look out for intellectual, ambitious people. Look out for the backstabs. Look out, most importantly, for the selfish individuals in our society. They will be the ones who will ruin our country. When he said that, he didn't know that we'll be in this plight as we're in now. We need to change. We need to change. We need to change. And change we must change very change. fast. It begins with leadership. And it's great to have you. Thank you, sir. And we're great. Thank you. Well, this is Journey's exclusive, and thanks for staying through uh, to watch that interview, exclusive interview we had with uh, the Ochehene Osajifu Amwetia Ofori Penyin, who granted us uh, the interview in his palace here in Accra. So we'll wrap up with a few of your comments, and then we will be done for today. Um, Nana Yao or being Diodu, you say that I'm not receiving a multi TV signal. Why? Well, I think we had initial upgrade challenges earlier in the day, but that has been rectified. And Amos Kojo Gapa says that's a very good initiative, but shouldn't forget to include the environmental health workers. And Nana Kweku says this is a laudable project. And Emmanuel Edujemfi, you say, Nana, well done. And Prince. Uh, Albert Roney say, wow, and I keep the good job. And Gloria Chumesi says, oh, so lovely. We're grateful to you for sending in all your comments and for those of you who make time to watch Join Us Exclusive. Join us again tomorrow for another edition.